Hi, everyone. Hope you guys can uh, see me okay. Everything's going well. Uh, I hope you guys are having a pleasant morning, evening, whatever time you're tuning in. Today, I want to be talking about a recent photo walk that I went on at the airport. I came across quite a gym. I came across a park that is next to the airport, uh, the Fort Lauderdale airport, which is the area I live in. And I was super excited about this because this means that I can stand alongside the airport uh, along the length of the runway and take photos in various different places. And the park actually runs the length of most of the runway, which is pretty cool. Uh, in Salt Lake City, where I used to live, it was, how's it going, Danielle? Um, and everyone else. Uh, in, the, in Salt Lake City, where I used to live, I was only able to stand on the end of a runway. There was another spot that you could stand on the end of another runway, but that, but it, it wasn't quite as good. wasn't terribly usable. So this is fantastic because I'm able to stand alongside and get some really fun shots. So I want to show you guys some of those fun shots and just talk about uh, what I do to try to make photos of planes more interesting. Now you may be thinking, James, you take photos of um, people, generally speaking, and that is absolutely true. Generally speaking, I do take photos of people, but but I have always been a plane enthusiast. Well, not always. I mean, I guess in my adulthood, it became a thing. And then uh, I've enjoyed taking photos of planes. They're really fun to take photos of. The, you know, they're like two giant buses connected to each other that... Is, is, and it's flying in midair with wings attached to it, sighting stuff. Um, oh, thank you, Christina. You want the tea bags in it? I'm glad you did that because I didn't want to be like, wife, fetch me my tea. <laughs> um, Do you want the tea bags in Here, it? actually, I don't need the tea bags. Okay. She's getting my tea. All right, let's hop into Lightroom. We're going to be hanging out in Lightroom today. Uh, hopefully everything technically goes well here. Also, the white balance is a little, little cool looking. Uh, okay, so I'm going to click that and I'm going to share that. Here we are. And share screen one. Oh, look at it guys. Aren't we in, aren't we in business here? I don't need that to be there. All right. Thank you, Christina. You're welcome. Oh, really please don't burn yourself. I mean, I'm fine. I got my tea here. Okay. So also Christina, could you turn the fan on low? So this is, um, this is, uh, sort of the vantage point I had and, I think probably the best spot to stand at this park. And so I'll show you like a, a bit of a wider angle. This is one that I didn't edit. Uh, this is a bit of a, a wider angle of the area that I was in, even though it's still on a 70 to 200 millimeter. So it's, you know, wide is, is, uh, yeah, it's not quite wide, but anyway, you get, you get some extra context here. And then here's a, a great shot or a great example of a shot of a plane coming into land. And what I noticed about these planes coming into land, which make, made me very excited, was that they would not touch down before they made it to the tower here. So you see the tower in the background. And uh, this tower is a, a really interesting point of intrigue in the photo, something to make it a bit more excited, exciting, kind of like a point on the mountain, if you will. And so I was like, ooh, I want to play with that. And that's one of the things I want to talk about here is um, including elements on the ground and including other elements in general with a plane to make the photo a bit more exciting. Let me give you a quick example of that before we move into our, um, this is my desktop by the way, into our, our Fort Lauderdale photos. So this is one I took in Salt Lake City a while back, one of my favorite photos that I've taken of a plane. And you can see this is a perfect, very minimalistic example of what I'm talking about where you put this little guy on the bottom here, uh, not only does that add some intrigue to the photo in general, visually speaking, but it also, um, well, and also if you guys like, if, if anything horrible is happening with my video or my audio, please let me know. Uh, I've, I've had bad experiences. So with this one, you can see that I included the tower and the plane. And this adds some intrigue, visually speaking, Thanks, Christina. And uh, it also 
connects us to the ground. Because one of the things I've noticed when I'm taking photos of planes is if I just take a photo of the plane, unless there is something extremely exciting happening in the sky, maybe some sort of ridiculous storm, which we do get here, and I hope to take some photos of. Let me get a, some green tea. Um, I, uh, I generally have a hard time feeling really excited about those photos. Um, so I, what I like to do is include something from the ground to give some context, to give a, a sense of depth, see, okay, this is this far from me. The plane is that far from me. And I, I really think it makes the photo come alive. And I'll show you a couple of other very quickly before we jump back in the Lightroom. These are a couple of photos I took of planes at, uh, <clears throat> oh, heavens. <clears throat> I did have some bread. I think part of it's still stuck in there. There was a, a wildfire in Utah. And you can see that this plane, uh, there's some enormity, a sense of enormity added to this plane and uh, kind of a dauntingness because of the atmosphere around. And that's another thing is you can include the atmosphere, assuming you have the atmosphere to work with. And then there's that one. And I mean, honestly, well, it's really close to the ground. We have ground elements and then it's shooting red stuff out of the bottom. And it, you know, that's, that's a great way to liven up a photo. So, um, okay. So one of the things that I was very excited about was taking photos of these yellow spirit planes. I love the yellow spirit planes because anytime you can inject yellow into a photo, it doesn't tend to be a bad thing unless, you know, the photo's already extremely loud to begin with. Um, but also, but yellow is a great addition to that, generally speaking. So the, the, it might overcome the loudness. So with this one, you can see the plane is coming in and let's see what my, uh, shutter speed was at 500th of a second. So I may or may not have started to use this technique that I began to use, um, which really helped out, which is dropping the shutter speed down. And to do that, I would raise the f-stop up. So I would end up at like f11 by the end of it. And that allowed me to either track the planes and blur the background or focus in on the background and have the plane come through in a blur. So you can see it just a little bit here, but it's not quite in full effect yet. Uh, and this is another thing that can make a plane photo more exciting is if you utilize a sense of motion, get some energy in there. So this is one where the plane's coming by. It's a, this one was actually on the path going to take off. And then we got a little guy here coming into land, but you can see this isn't terribly exciting. It would be one thing if the scene was different. Maybe the only thing uh, down low to the ground was nothing. <laughs> and then the, the plane would stand out better. In this case, it just kind of blends in. So we need a bigger plane. And that's in fact what I did. Let me get to a bigger plane situation. I had quite a few come through. So this is one where you can see I'm now dragging the shutter. I'm at F11 at 200th of a second. That's about where I, I stayed the entire time, more or less. And so you can see there's a clear sense that this plane is flying through the scene at a couple hundred miles per hour as it's coming in to land. I don't know exactly what the landing speed is um, on, on this plane in particular or larger planes, but I think it's a couple hundred miles per hour. So either way, it's fast. It's a, it's a lot of um, plastic and metal moving very quickly. So we can see that, you know, it's blurred out nice, nicely. And then we have this as what was supposed to be a center point in the photo. And so I was constantly striving for that in the photos, but sometimes it went a little off to the left or to, to the right because I had to prioritize getting a plane in the shot because what I could have done was this and then centered it up, right? Do you work for NASA? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, yes, I do. So it could be like this, right? But the problem is, is of course, it cuts off the, the plane. So I had to focus in on the plane in this case, especially if I wanted to get it in a one by one. And I was trying to prioritize one by ones for these because it really helps it work, you know, with Instagram. Green tea. So let's move on to this jet blue photo. Uh, I feel like NASA would take a tremendous amount of discipline 
So with the JetBlue photo, we have quite a few from, the, I think it was either this sequence, I'm assuming actually another plane came through that was, yeah, because the lighting's actually different here. So let's jump back over here though. So you can see that what I've done here is I've made it where the plane actually is just about to kiss the tower. And so the tower's way off to the right in this case, obviously. But I think it works well here. And I think uh, having the plane come in and be blurred like that really works out well. I would love it if the plane was a little higher. And that's a trend that I saw uh, over the evening with all of the planes coming in. Perhaps if I found a way to get higher, there were some trees. I suppose I could climb a tree, but still worked out pretty well. So this one, another example. So this one, I'm putting it in the center. And so, it, you know, it's it, this one's I'm not quite sure how I feel about this one just yet. But then this guy, I'm actually thinking is quite nice because we have the focus of the tower here. And then we have the plane just kind of shooting through the frame and cut off on either end. I think it adds a lot of energy to the photo. Kind of fun. So this is another one. You can see that the lighting has changed, right? So the lighting on the top of the plane has punched through uh, the clouds. The sun, I should say, has punched through the clouds and it's lighting up the top of the plane. And I was dealing with some drastically different lighting situations uh, because I, the sun would go behind the clouds or come out. Plenty of clouds here in South Florida. So I was fiddling with that, and then the tower would get quite dark at times as well, which makes me excited to go back to that spot when the lighting is really fantastic, and you, you go back over and over and get endless combinations. That's one cool thing about photography. But this one, once again, plane's coming in, just about to kind of kiss the tower as it's coming through. And so there's a lot of it. I'm trying to inject energy. I'm not super interested in just uh, a shot of a, a plane that, is super sharp that doesn't have that doesn't have foreground background elements in it other than the plane uh to me that that's a bit stale and it works for a lot of people a lot of people just like taking photos of planes kind of like they like taking photos of birds totally cool but i want to have an interactive palette of environmental objects to play with and uh, to be able to add some intrigue, some energy, some, some dynamicism to the photo. And this one, you can see I've pulled out a little bit. This one's a, I believe I cropped this one 16 by nine. I'm still at F11, uh, one two hundredth of a second. By the way, I am, I did shoot all of these at 70, with a 70 to 200 millimeter lens, uh, 70 to 200 millimeter F4. So once again, we have the plane blurred here, and you can see it's a bit more blurred than the previous one that was shot at a similar angle. So you can see that difference between the 500th of a second and the 200th of a second the right there. Oh, heavens. My iPad's talking to me. My apologies. So, um, so with this one, I have the tower centered, right? Planes coming through. I could play around with different croppings for this one. And a lot of my shots were actually similarly uh, photographed in terms of the crop or the lack thereof. And then I cropped them in nice and tight. So like this one, for example, let's see what this one was. This is the value of being in Lightroom. Tell, hello, welcome. I'm surprised you can even get that close this time with security around these areas. Yeah, it's a really special spot. Uh, it's very clear. It's very clear. So I was I was quite a bit tighter. I, I, I apologize. I was quite a bit tighter. I was also dealing with some sensor dust at F11. <laughs> so that's that. Now, listen, you might look at this and go, man, why don't you just uncrop that baby? Because you know, I don't like it so cropped in like that. And that's another option. Nothing wrong with that. Like we could do something fun like this. There's, there's all sorts of ways we can play with it. I was just poking around with it today, trying to get it into a square. You can do whatever you want. Lots of good options out there. But you can see in this one, I was able to actually center. Hi, David. Welcome. Welcome. How's Liverpool today? You can see that the tower is centered here, as opposed to the other ones where I couldn't quite get it centered. And what I was trying to go for is, of course, this like perfect shot where the, the plane is perfectly centered within the tower 
and the tower is perfectly centered within the scene. But and the you know the lighting is great. Everything's everything's um, extravagant. What's the word? Impeccable. There we go. That's it. But you don't get that every time. And you can see that you know as I'm shooting through here, uh, this might be not be all the frames, but I'm not capturing at 24 frames per second, right? So I, I'm, I do have less options. So uh, this was kind of the best one out of the bunch, perhaps. So if we move to this one, this is a bit of another type of shot. I pushed in on this one. What was interesting to me with this one is that the plane, I've noticed when they come around the turn and they point directly at you, it gets really exciting for a second. It's like the plane's looking at you. So I wanted to capture that. I think it worked out quite well here. And uh, it reminds me of some of the, Christina actually brought this up and it, I think it is true. It reminds me of some of the, uh, the photos you'll see in airports of the various airports like Delta will have their photos. Uh, I'm not comparing quality. I'm just saying it's the type of photo. Then we have this one quite far away, plane taking off. You can see that the further away the plane gets, a lot of times the, and the directionality of the plane, a lot of times that makes the photo less interesting. In this case, not really an exciting photo. Uh, and I can play around with different things. If I got more fencing down here, not so, not so fantastic. So this is a good example of not, not so perfect photo. Uh, maybe something you could use in a photo story, but eh. So then I'm getting them also coming in. So you can see some of my shots that I'm not necessarily using. Got the, the plane. So th this is a good example of something that's not super interesting to me. The clouds are, are intriguing. The lighting on the plane is kind of intriguing. If the conditions would have been terrific, right? So if the sun was on the front of the plane and then the clouds are really interesting, maybe it was a morning shoot, that could have been that could have been some some tasty stuff, perhaps. But I took it, I was like, eh. You know, not not super exciting to me. Uh, although I did have another one somewhere in here where I took a similar shot. So then I have this where I'm I'm tracking the plane in. One thing I'll say about tracking, if I can if I can teach anything about tracking, I'm not the master of tracking, but if I can teach anything about tracking, it is to start tracking as far back as possible on an on a subject, whether it's a bicycle, a plane, car. Um, a really high speed, oh, like an ostrich, <clears throat> right? Track way back because that will give you more of an opportunity for your muscle memory to kind of dial in the motion. If you start as it's just coming by, your body will not be ready to handle that motion and you're going to move way too fast generally, maybe way too slow. I guess it depends on the situation. I find that I overshoot it a lot. So tracking long before you start taking photos, good idea. So we have this one here and this one works. I do like it and I like the framing of it, but everything is blurred. So what I was trying to do was make the plane be sharp and then have the background be blurred, right? And once again, we're still at F11, uh, 200th of a second, shooting on manual. But the plane is, is pretty, pretty mushy, right? And that's okay. I mean, it's definitely a usable photo. I, I don't mind some pretty intense shutter drag symptoms, if you will, or effects. But this one, maybe, that's where I normally cut. This one, <laughs> this one is perfect in terms of, of clarity on the plane. And then it's taken a while to load in terms of pixels there. But yeah, nice and clear on the plane. And then the background, nice and blurred. Good action. You feel like you're you're riding with the plane. Lots of action and energy. I would have loved to have these wheels not be touching this building. If it was a little higher, once again, that would be good. Uh, the tower maybe would have been cut off in a bit of a strange place. If it was too high, it would have gone over the top of the tower. So you know, we're, we're in, we're working with little t tolerances here, but, uh, that would have been nice, but it's still quite nice as is. I think, I think it looks good, especially big, smaller. It, it I think this really starts if you look over here on the left-hand side, right. Really starts to uh, bother the photo 
that the wheels are touching the the buildings but when it's nice and big you can really get a sense of that separation <clears throat> that yellow is a lot it definitely has the potential of being being out in a proactive way potential of being out in a proactive way i'm not sure what that means uh, but it still works you know yeah i do think it still works uh, as is but like all right, i guess you're saying it could be too loud it could be too ridiculous so if we go to this this next one here, then I start playing around with some of the foliage a little bit. And what I'm doing is I'm pairing a plane with other elements in the scene. So we have the city in the background. Add some more context, add some more intrigue. And the foliage adds some depth, uh, makes for a more exciting photo. And I really like how it turned out. This one, kind of playing around, a bit more experimental, not super exciting. And then this one, which is the one I actually used for the thumbnail, I think is a, it's a good combination of a lot of what I'm talking about where you have a lot of scene. It's not just about the plane, but where the plane lives. And then you have the city in the background, which is part of where the plane lives. There's a lot of things all together. It's a very busy scene, but it's also organized. And one of the things that makes it feel organized is the fact that the plane is not clashing with anything else. It's nicely separated. It's in a, it's in a lovely spot over here on the right hand side and the lights aren't clashing with it. It's high enough. You know, a lot of times when I'm taking photos of these planes, they're going to be too low. They're going to be touching this building and it's not, it's not quite going to work. Uh, in this case, I was very blessed with this composition. If we move along to the next one, how long in are we? 22 minutes. Great. If we move along to this next one here, we get, oh, let's see. 85 millimeter ISO 125 F11 at 200th of a second. So my settings haven't changed. We have some blurred background elements. And this one feels a bit more like a, what do I want to say? Almost like somebody went out there with an instant camera and it's, it's, it's film. So it's okay that it's not super polished looking. That's the sort of thing. I'm speaking almost, I'm speaking specifically to the, the, composition itself, the framing and how far out I am. Uh, so it's a different kind of shot than what I've been doing so far, but I, I, I think it's fun. I think it's interesting. And uh, it works really, a lot of these, like I said, they work really good big because it accentuates that, that motion in the background. So this one, another one, that one, uh, that one was not a keeper, but that was just another one that I had worked on. Then we have it coming in front of the tower again. You see the tower has gotten really dark. Uh, I do like this photo. I, I think it kind of works, but the tower has gotten really dark in the background and it's really colliding with the buildings. So I think separation is a big deal. And a lot of times in editing, you can't poke around with, you know, doing some stuff to make it separate better. But at the end of the day, you are, the light is your master, right? So that's that. I think that's all my plane photos in this situation that I want to talk about. Yep. And then I want to talk about some other photos that are not plane related. So we're going to shift, my friends. We're going to shift over. And first off, I want to talk about this one. I just uh, shared this one on Twitter today. I'm just really, really happy with how it turned out. Got a nice uh, set of clouds here. These clouds have been pervasive throughout the summer here in Florida. And I really... Uh, I really love the way they look, and I, I think I was able to capture, of course, the visual aesthetic of them, but also the feeling of them. And a lot of times you can do that through post-processing, uh, at least the way that I, I wanted to communicate it. But I also want to I, I talk about some CrossFit photos that I took. I just got back from the CrossFit games. No planes in, in these photos. But um, although there was a tornado siren that happened while I was there. They were testing it and that was interesting. And then also I'll say, uh, the hotel I was staying in, I was in Wisconsin. I was outside of Madison, Wisconsin, and it's lots of tornadoes fly through those areas. And oh, how do I do this? Maybe I do this. Boom. Hi. So lots of tornadoes come through 
that area. And so I wake up at 1 a.m. in the morning to uh, an alert on my phone it says tornado warning. And that's it's pretty intense to receive that uh, waking up from your sleep. There's it's one thing if it's a watch, but the fact that it was a warning and I'm in this, I'm in this, uh, place I've never been before. I'm in a hotel room that is pointing towards kind of the back of the lot. And there's a, uh, there's like a neighborhood and you have the, you have, um, uh, houses, you have a retaining wall and you have trees. That's all I could see. So I'm, I have no idea what's happening. I don't know how close this tornado is to me. Uh, and then I think I'm fairly positive, 90% positive. I heard a tornado alarm as well. And so I'm like kicking into gear, grab the camera, of course, and filming this stuff. And I run out, I run out to the front of the hotel just to kind of get an idea of where everything was and what was going on. And you couldn't see much, but I could see a lot more than I could see just looking out the window. It gave me a, a, a feel for the context of things. And so I'm standing there. I, there's three other guys standing next to me. And I'm just looking around watching the rain. The wind's really kicking up. I think there's something special about the wind in a tornado. It's kind of different than other types of winds. But it, it's, a, it's, a bit more, it's a bit more eerie. So I'm standing there, I'm out there for maybe 30 seconds and lightning strikes so close that the car alarms in the parking lot of the hotel start going off. And one of the traffic lights is like blinking, uh, multiple actually. So that was uh, the, the sound of a lightning strike when it's right next to you is different than the sound when it's far away. When it's right next to you, it's just like this really distinct pop, like, pow, like that. Remind, reminds me of those things where you, you pull maybe like one of those pop guns or one of the things you pull when, you know, on the 4th of July, like that, like that, but 10,000 times that. So really, really fun stuff. It, it was great. Um, nobody got hurt. I mean, it, I, I didn't get hurt and nobody in the hotel got hurt. Uh, it did take out some houses through some debris across the highway and stuff. So crazy stuff. Back into light room we go. Bonk. So I wanted to show you these CrossFit games photos. And uh, let's see, let's pick out the ones I had edited. Oh, you know what? Let me actually, I'm going to go here for these. Sorry, everyone. You guys get to see my file system. Uh, this is unfortunate. This is unfortunately not aesthetically pleasing. Oh, that's the wrong one. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, CrossFit. CrossFit. Oh, nope. I'm in the wrong one. I'm in the wrong one, guys. You're seeing my life today. <laughs> this is most of my day looking through Finder. Let's uh switch this baby over to dark mode. Oh, boy. Oh, it broke. Everything broke. Oh, did it quit? Oh, boy. Here we go. So this, these are some photos I took at a, a CrossFit gym. This is my buddy, Jeff. He is a CrossFit coach. We got to hang out on this trip. And I wanted to grab some photos of him while I was there. And so these in involve people, and I thought you might be interested in that. We have him standing there coaching, and one of the things that he's doing as he's coaching is he's just staring intently, and you can see him making gestures with, uh, with his hands and, and that sort of thing. And uh, I wanted to capture that, and as we move through, we'll see more of those types of things. Then we have him interacting with the people, got the fist bump, foreground element. I'm shooting with the 70 to 200 millimeter once again, as I like to do. So we got the rope in the foreground, add some dynamicism, got rope in the background. He's got a Hebrew tattoo on his arm. I forget what it means, but it's pretty cool. Yeah, he's got some nice tattoos. He's a great guy. I like his hair, very similar to mine. So that was a, you know what? I don't think I have too many from his gym exported. This one's, uh, these are actually from the games. So I wanted to get the crowd. I've, one thing I've, I have learned over time is to focus in on the crowd as well. Pay attention to what uh, everybody else is doing, not just the, the people that they're looking at. And in this case, I got this nice cross-section 
of a bunch of people screaming and the CrossFit fans were, you know, they were super pumped. I mean, obviously they're there for a reason. They're paying the money for a reason. And I really like how this worked out. I focused in on her, I believe. It's always good to find one person to focus on. And particularly if they're one of the more interesting people and then let all the rest of the scene kind of fall around them. I found that's a good way to go. If we move down, we got some girls running and these are, these are kind of like secondary fo photos that I use in an Instagram photo story. Uh, I wanted to get the crowd on the right hand side, kind of like with the planes, right? Where you have the, the plane in the air and then you have something on the ground to give, uh, to, to kind of give a sense of, of context to where the plane is. So we have these tighter, got the water bottle in the foreground. Um, and I, the focus I think is on her could be, but it, it could be like almost in the middle. Uh, I think some of the shots where it's like kind of in the middle of the two people. And sometimes that can work. Sometimes it doesn't work. This one I'm really happy with. We got camera guy. We got photographer. I love all these different points of context. I like photos that have a lot going on in them, but they're, they're nicely uh, put together and a lot of separation. And in this case, we have that. We have a lot of action. Her foot's in midair. Quite nice. Uh, if I would have drugged the sh shutter, right, enough, she could have been blurry. That would have been kind of fun. But then I would risk the, the shot being blurry as well. But I like leaving in this thing on the bottom here. I think it adds something to it. Uh, depth. Establishing a sense of depth. Good stuff. It's always good to add. This is another one, less cropped. So that's that's you know sort of Instagram version. So it'll I can control how it crops. And then there's this one, tall version. So they had this uh, camera on a giant arm, and that was super cool. Like you'll get you'll you'll see baby versions of that in certain types of productions. But when you go to the real thing, you get the giant arm with the the big screen on the bottom that the person can look at. That's cool. I like that. Okay, so this is uh, Justin Medeiros. He won for the men. And this is him being interviewed. And I love how these stripes turn out. I love these diagonal stripes. Uh, very aesthetically pleasing. And then we have the story being told of him being interviewed after he he won. And then this was right before that happened. We have him screaming into the crowd. His parents are right there. And he was... He was he gave he came over and hugged them and that sort of thing. But I love that I was able to get the cameraman in there. You even have the the bar that he just came across the finish line with. You have the crowd. You have the the interaction between him, you know the relationship between him and the crowd. And um, I think that that makes the photo really strong. And it's clear that he's the subject. There's there's nothing crazy going on behind him. There could have easily been, you know, any number of of chaotic items happening behind him, but there wasn't. But I think this one is probably my strongest photo from the entire event. So that's that. I was gonna, I think I thought I took some more in the gym, but yeah, that's it. All right. Well, listen guys, that was it. I just wanted to come talk about some planes with you, uh, give some, some thoughts about how I go about making a plane photo look good. And I wanted to share that, that photo walk and that new find for me. And then mm, I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll throw in some, some CrossFit photos as well. I, this is a bit of a test. Cause I, I wasn't sure how long this was going to run. I was thinking this might run for an hour, but it's 30 minutes. <laughs> so if you guys have any questions, now's the time. Hey James, hope you and Christina and the bump are well thinking of you all and praying for your bro. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. You're fantastic. It means a lot to me. Appreciate the well wishes. You're welcome for the insight. Hmm. What else could I talk about that I missed there? I like taking photos from planes as well. That's always fun. You, you have a completely different set of variables that you're playing with there. It's kind of tough because I know I have plane photos, but they're all kind of scattered all over the world of my file systems. So uh, that would be a bit tough to find it all. But one of the things I have noticed about taking photos, 
through plain windows and trying to get the environment in there is not always, but many times it's good. It's a good idea to include the plain window, right? Cause then you get a, the person gets the feeling that you're, they're riding on the plane with you. Uh, and it can be a bit more of an intimate photo. It's like, okay, this is how this person is experiencing this from the plane window, but you can also push in as well and, and get these really lovely landscape shots. And I think it's so amazing that for so for most of history, people were not 30,000 feet in the air. <laughs> like, like it's such a privilege. If you get, if you get frustrated because your plane is delayed or, or, you know, any number of the, the airport issues that can come about that make your life harder. And just remember you're, you're, on, you're on the process of getting into a tube that flies through the air at 500 miles per hour and, and will take you to a destination in three hours when it used to take you, you know, what, nine, 12 hours. Or if you fly across, like, you know, we would fly from Utah to South Carolina where my family is and it would be a four hour journey or so. And the, the fact that that was only four hours when driving across the country takes days, uh, that's pretty amazing. It's pretty cool. And the, the fact that you can look out a window and see the world from 30,000 feet and, uh, you can actually, you can learn a lot of things about the world as well from up there because there's a lot of things that you don't see from close that when you see from far and you know what you're looking for, you can learn about crazy things that have happened in the past. Like I'm, I'm big into ancient mega floods. And, uh, that's, that's something that if you fly over the right parts of the United States, you can see the remnants of that very exciting stuff. Uh, in Washington, I was able to fly over, uh, it's called dry falls, Cooley. And this was the largest waterfall in the world at one time. G enormous flood came through, uh, orders of magnitude bigger than any floods that we have nowadays and just destroyed the landscape and cut out a waterfall. Fun stuff, fun stuff. You like my street photography. Thank you. I appreciate that. I really appreciate that. I feel like people are hanging out now. Let's go on. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go on the, the Instagrams. Let me close up. Let's see. Let me see if there's anything else in Lightroom I could show you guys for a close up Lightroom. Do, 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 do. Thank you that you like my street photography. What do you like about my street photography? <laughs> Let's hop on my Instagram. I'm going to talk about my Instagram a little bit. here let's do this there's a, a lovely instagram app that you have you have to buy it um i use the subscription thing called setup but if not you have to buy it but it's a it's a nice instagram app if you're if you're super huge into the world of scrolling instagram on your desktop also, thank you for inspiring too. I use Visco more recently and you help a lot. Maybe I should do a, a Visco <laughs> stream sometime. I think that would actually be quite doable because I could plug my phone into my computer and share that. I think that, that wouldn't be hard at all. Uh, that would be very interesting. I might do that. I feel like when you take beach photos, they make me feel good. Excellent. <laughs> That's what I want. Let's, uh, well, here's a beach photo for you here. Let's jump on into this beach photo. Oh, heavens, there we go. Okay, beach photo. So I uh, I just made this post recently, and I wanted to, oh, oh, goodness. I wanted to reshare these photos because I was, I was so happy with these photos, and it's a great example of why getting out consistently will sometimes yield really exciting results. I was going to say catastrophic, but that's really, that's not the word here. Um, catastrophic is when I dropped my camera in New York city and broke the lens, 
But here's a beach photo that would make someone feel good in theory. So uh, yeah, I took this one in San Diego. And this one uh, just fell into place. There were surfers walking around. It's so pretty. You captured it so elegantly. Thank you so much. Um, there's a lot of photos around this that don't feel so elegant. And so as a photographer, what you have to learn to do is let the, let the non-elegant ones wash over you and just keep shooting. And you'll take a hundred photos. You come back with three good ones. That's a good day. That's fantastic. So with this one, I can go into full screen too. Ha, beautiful. So this one, I was standing there and there were surfers walking about and I was capturing them in various positions. And this next photo you can see is another example of where one of those positions that surfers was in. You can see the light was dramatically different because the sun's off to the left of her, right? It's hitting the front of her face, hitting the front of her board. Those little splashes of light really add so much to this photo. But if we go back to this one, uh, I believe this was later in the evening, so the sun had gone down over here ways. And the person was coming through, and he he was falling into place. And I remember the electricity of seeing this photo <laughs> come together. <laughs> I was so pumped. And the four birds, I mean, I'm a little bit I'm a little bit bothered by the fact that it was not a group of three birds. But it would have felt lopsided, so it's probably a good thing. But I, I, you know, I've been trained to love groups of threes as a photographer, right? So, I, I think a group of three would have been cool, but they would have had to have been spread out differently. I think it works really well here. It's it might actually be better that they were four birds or groups of two, right? So we have the perfect silhouette, perfect stride, surfboards, in such a great place. It's fantastic. I like it a lot. And he's separated from the background. That's a big deal, right? Because his head could have easily touched right there. Bad stuff. I love street photography, but I'm torn between that and astro landscape. I'm colorblind, so editing is, is a bugger with street. <laughs> you could shoot monotone, man. That's a thing. People do that. That would be a really interesting reason to shoot monotone you can put that in your your instagram bio right but yes yeah, so, so that would be tricky are you colorblind for uh, just specific colors are you colorblind for all colors and is it you know what what's the nature of that I'm, that's very intriguing to me and then um with the astrophotography yeah obviously i guess you don't really have to worry about that too much that there are different types of photographies that are that are so different than what I'm used to shooting. And you realize that there's a lot of technicality that goes into those types of photography that I don't necessarily have to deal with on a daily basis, shooting handheld. <clears throat> so then we had this one. I would say this is a step down from the previous one. Like this was just <laughs> ridiculous. I mean, the light, also the reflection on the ground, like, oh my gosh perfect stuff. Any, any element could have been removed from this photo and or shifted and it really would have taken away from it. But there's so much that came together here to make this work. And you can either go into a studio <laughs> and try to make all the elements happen artificially, or you can wait around for a long time organically. But yeah, once again, splash of light, nice stride, got a surfboard on her head. Be curious to know if the surfboard on the head, that might have been a problem for this photo, right? If he had it on his head, that might have been a bit too close. <laughs> William Shakespeare. Welcome, William Shakespeare. So, um, and then I got this hacky sack photo. Got the thing in midair. Very excited about that. And then we have um, we have the fact that once again it's not clashing, and I, well, the way that I captured this photo is I actually asked them. So with all the other ones, I was not talking to the the people; I was just letting them move about, and they didn't seem to really notice or care. 
uh, with these, I was like, okay, I, I need to capture this photo with the hacky sack in a really good spot. And I need to capture various positions. I need to probably stand there for a little bit to achieve this. And, um, and I'm, I'm happy I did that because that allowed me to get a lot of different frames to choose from. And out of that came this. Let's move on. Let's see if I got any other beach photos recently. Oh yeah, got the Hawaii action here. Okay, so we got some surfers again. Love some good surfers. So I'm the I'm the guy that's not just going to take a photo of the water and the shoreline. I'm going to take a photo of I'm I'm going to make sure to get some people in it because that's the that's how I know naturally how to make a photo more intriguing. So I have a lot of respect for people who are making photos incredibly rich, like uh, landscape photos, wave photos, making them extremely intriguing without including people, just in, in, including the, the feeling of the wave coming over, uh, the, the positioning, you know, like two waves hitting, oh my gosh, two waves hitting each other or just utilizing the landscape. That's some good stuff. That's some good stuff. go here. This was one of, this is probably my favorite photo of that evening. I love this because we have so much of the landscapes. It's such a beautiful scene. You get a real feeling for the area, but then you have this little surprise down here in the bottom. This one was nice too. It has a really authentic feel. <clears throat> okay. So protan, protanopia colorblind. So yeah, black and white is a good is a good shout. Shout idea? Shout how what would we convert that into? <laughs> I get what you're saying though. Uh, when I think about it, the most like Instapost was a foggy black and white reflected window bridge shot. Okay. I love a good I love a good black and white foggy shot. What was the guy I spoke about a while back? Uh, what was his name? Da, 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 da. I don't want to sit here and like noodle around for 10 minutes trying to find it. I've got my explore feed. Uh, oh, I can't remember. Anyway, his, fo his photos are, are, he shoots a bunch of black and white photos somewhere in Europe and there there's, unbelievable. And the photos are all the subjects, I'm sorry, are always quite distant. Works out quite well every time. And there's a lot of fog, a lot of fog. Another beach photo. So this one, you know, I, I just thought it was cool because it, we have this sort of weird unknown figure hanging out in the foreground, silhouetted, and then the sun and then these ships, which I love. So move over to this one. Now this one was one that worked out really well and you can see that this theme, James, have you heard of Sam Jones? Oh my gosh. I'll go. Let me go to Sam Jones in just a minute. Okay. Good idea. Yeah. 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 I think, I think that it would be a good idea to play around with black and white stuff. Um, I don't know a whole lot about protanopia colorblind. What colors does that keep you from seeing? But um, anyway, with this one, I'll now look up Sam Jones. With this one, I'm shooting into the sun again, more silhouettes. And the, the colors are quite different in this one. I, I decided to make the shadows rather green, really leaning into a filament quality. Uh, I think it added a lot of, a lot of um, mood to the photo. I love, I've always loved the feeling of looking at an old Polaroid. And while I, I wouldn't say that I'm emulating Polaroids uh, to the T every time I edit a photo, I love, I love the fact that when you look at a Polaroid, you feel the moment just as much as you, you see it. There's something really special about it. Okay, Sam Jones. Is he on? So he's on Instagram? Sam Jones. Sam Jones pictures. Probably this guy, yeah? What we got going on? What am I gonna find? Is this it? I mean, we got a lot of. Okay, hold on. Followed by. Visible. I feel like I should know who this guy is. I'm getting that kind of vibe. 
But I'm not seeing a lot of photos. Like, I mean, I, I, technically this is a photo, but this is like a kind of an iPhone photo situation. Is this one of his? Did he take this? Oh, wait, Steve Martin, Universal, Sam, ah, Sam Jones. Okay, fun stuff. That's definitely not a snapshot. Either it's not a it's it's not a snapshot or it's a a really serendipitous snapshot with one hundred thousand banana peels. <laughs> Steve Martin, <laughs> what was the story here? <laughs> this is really cool though. I love the I love the the way his skin looks. I love it. I love his expression. I love the stride. Love the banana. There are banana peels everywhere to be found. Oh my gosh. Okay. So is this the wrong one though? <laughs> Reds are pretty non-existent. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. I can imagine that would be a little bit confusing, not knowing how red your reds are or if they're reds. Black and white. Okay. Here, I'll look up another Sam Jones. The stream is getting out of way off. I figured I would, you know, talk about some plane photos and it would be an hour long and I call it a day, but here we are looking up Sam Jones, Sam J, J Jones. Okay. All right. Listen, I, I think I'm going to need a link. I think I'm going to need a link. Till then we'll look at my photos. <laughs> yeah. Then we think at this guy, we got the surfer. If the sun was not on him, that would have, you know, this one would have really fallen apart. So the light on his back works out quite Okay, off camera show. Got it. Yep. We're doing it. Off. Off. Typing. Off camera show. Oh, I probably shouldn't put spaces, should I? Or is it this one? Yeah, this is probably it. Oh, okay. Yep. This is. Wow. Wow. So, yeah, this is an equally probably an equally um, well-known photographer that I should know about. So got the Dave, Mr. Dave Grohl here. Beautiful light. Look at that. It's what you always want to happen when you're on the street. Doesn't, doesn't always work that way. <laughs> Lovely black and white shots. So, I mean, this, the, it's interesting because with photos like this, they're so simple. They're so visually simple that you have to do, you have to really know your stuff. Like you have to know how to make this shot become what it is. Like this really character rich, very polished, beautiful photo. And he, you know, the expression is just as important is just as important as the lighting, right? Yes. Those is. I love those so much. Dave looks at it for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, beautiful, beautiful light on the the left side of the face here. Nicely falls off. I'm a uh, I'm very appreciative to studio lighting and photographers who can use it well. Beautiful um, little points in the eyes. It's fantastic. I was watching. Oh yeah, I was watching a video on YouTube. They have videos there. Uh, and there was it was this guy who was talking about cinema photography and how in movies, anytime you see the person lit, I, mean, I hope I get this correctly, anytime you see the person lit, they're going to have light in their in their eyes specifically. And when that light goes away, it tends to signify that the person is dying. Like if you have a scene where, where there's a death, well, a lot of times if you watch very closely, the light will leave their eye. And I thought that was absolutely fascinating. And so you see here that the, how, how much of a lively quality it adds to these. I mean, look at this. This is a really interesting. You could tell that he's, he, he's done this so much. He's like, I'm going to, I'm going to cut off ha like her hair and I'm going to put her on the right side of the frame. But I like it. It really, really works out. It adds some, what's the word? It adds some, uh, I can't find it. Just kind of uh, adds character, but it also adds a sense of 
Mm. You know what I mean? So that's where we're going to leave that. But, <laughs> oh my gosh, we got Weird Al here. Wow. Oh, it looks like a fire, but I think it's a paper. No, it is fire. It is fire. He's burning his accordion. That makes sense. But once again, this is a really good example of creativity and photography uh, when it comes to working with a minimalistic amount of things that you can put in the frame, right? So in many of these, it's literally just somebody on a white background. But if you go to Weird Al here, it's a background that's kind of rustic and weird and like, where is this? But also you have this accordion in the foreground. Somebody thought, let's get Weird Al to burn an accordion. It's perfect, but who would think of this? Would you have thought of this? <laughs> this is this is imaginative. Imaginative. Tension. That's one thing that we could say it added to that other photo is tension. But character. Liveliness, tension, character. Extravagantness, exuberant. Um, interpretations of extremities. Very nice. Got the hand, just a little hand um, inflection there. Is that the right word? He's holding a goldfish. <laughs> yeah, these are so creative. These, I think these took a lot of planning. I don't think it's like he woke up that day and was like, oh my gosh, uh, we're here. Everybody's here. This is great. We're having a great time. Got some casual headshots. Now I'm going to go get Sarah Silverman holding the Bible. Anybody got a Bible? The, this is something that Probably took a lot of time and planning, generally speaking. <clears throat> we got, <laughs> okay. Yeah, these are great. These are cool. A lot of fun. I think we can learn, if you're a street photographer, if you're strictly a landscape photographer, whatever, I think you can learn a lot from looking at other types of photography. It's going to make your eye more dynamic. Mm. Wow. Wow. Okay, this might be my favorite one I've seen so far. I don't know if that surprises you guys, but I love a good environmental portrait. So she's in a school bus. If we, if we put this in some sort of story, is there a caption for this? Yeah, there might, I mean, there might be some context to this, but regardless, you have the fact that she's in a school bus, the school bus is way out, and this is a great example of when you can use uh, an F1.8 or 1.2 and really make it shine. And then we have her looking off frame, which introduces some tension. And I love that you get the sense that she's thinking about something. She's, she's feeling something. So good. Wow. That's excellent. All right. Well, guys, I think on that note, I'm going to wrap this up here. Unless you guys have any more questions, things that we can chat about. I'm happy to noodle about other things, but I appreciate you guys hanging out. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Um, thanks for hanging out with me this evening. Going to give a couple more moments for anybody to say, hey, tell me about NASA. That was one of the, yeah, so at the beginning, right? So working at NASA is great. I love working at NASA. And one of the things about NASA is that the food is just so easy. You just open up the thing, put it in your mouth. You don't even have to move your jaw. Isn't that counterintuitive, though? Because if you think about it, in space, your bones break down, right? So wouldn't you want your jaw to be strong? Do they chew on like a rubber ball in space? I'm going to leave you guys with that question. Anyway. Uh, yeah, Danielle, thank you for sharing that with me. And uh, thanks, everybody, for hanging out. Hope you guys have a, a good rest of your week. It's only Tuesday. Good rest of your week. Um, be safe, healthy, enjoy yourselves.